what's up guys welcome back to my channel my name is casey and if you're new here welcome so today i am actually just jumping right into this video i kind of started the video late so <laughs> this is just me um i'm going to install a, a five by five closure a straight wig closure wig that i customized on a different video i actually have that video up of me uh, my new bleaching updated bleaching and plucking video so this is me just doing the ball cap i don't typically leave the whole cap on i sew what i need down and leave the back so there's extra you know air so the scalp can breathe so this updated um install video i find it's a lot easier than how the typical method of how uh, most people install closure wigs or install wigs overall so i was just matching her complexion i use cream of nature um cream oil free foundation and i'm just gonna i match her skin color so now i'm just going in to put that color that matches her skin the best all over the um the cap that's left on her head i'm trying to get the best angles for you guys i do apologize i'm still trying to figure out the best angles to film um these hair tutorials on because i don't have very many on my channel so it's really hard and my studio space in my my home is not that big so I always just try my best to get um, the best angles for you guys. So I do apologize if this is not the best angle. There will be so many more coming, but this is just giving you an example of exactly how I do my frontals now, or closures now. So I like to customize the hairline, I customize the wig before even putting it on my client's head. This is just helpful because it just it's easier and it's faster as well. And I feel like it just gives me a guideline to where I need to cut the lace off and things like that. So you'll see. So I'm going in with my Lux Melt waterproof glue. This is from my own line. And I'm going to go in with three layers. So each layer that you go in with, you got to make sure that First of all, the layers are not too thick and that you spread it out evenly so that it dries evenly. So you gotta wait till each layer turns clear and tacky before you put on another layer, okay? Because if you put on too much layers at one time, some of it will not dry evenly and you're gonna have a, a mess, like little white clunks and things like that, and you don't want that. So just take your time and spread out all the layers so that they're nice and evenly smooth and they the one each layer dries at the same time. For this install, I used four layers. Um, my clients like to keep their hair on. Well, this particular client likes to keep her, her wig on for a couple of weeks. And so the last time she said it stayed on for like three, four weeks, she actually had to take it off. So that's perfect. So I said I'll do the same amount of layers that I did last time. You should have a guideline of how many layers you use depending on the, the, um, the glue. So, you know, some glues were require more layers some glues don't require much at all so that's something you just gotta look into and it's, it's gonna boil down to trial and error again so once all the layers have dried a bit and became and become clear and tacky then I'm gonna pull the lace into the glue so you're gonna pull it just a little bit over the glue just in case so i don't want to put it exactly on the glue where the glue ends i'm going to push it a little tiny smidget forward so that i can see if i um i'm covering all her hairline to make sure and i'm covering all the glue i gotta make sure you want to make sure that you cover all the glue so that's what i'm making sure of right now that all of the glue is covered so i'm just taking my finger and pushing it into the glue when i have placed it exactly where i want it to go so when I lift the lace up, um, I didn't bring the glue down far enough. So this can be avoided if you take like um, some of that foundation or in a deeper color than her skin and make little lines like of where the glue should, though how far down the glue should go. I didn't do that this time, but that is a way to like to have a guide of where how far down the glue is so you don't bring it down too far or you don't um, not bring it down far enough. So you just take some foundation that's probably a little bit darker than her skin and then you could just wipe it off before you actually use the glue and put it down so guys i actually like to cut the lace off before i even melt the glue the, the um melt the lace down the first time 
So you know how usually you would put the glue in the lace and then you would put the melt band on and then pull the melt band off and then cut the lace off? This time I do not do that. I cut the lace off before. Oh yes, I'd also like to mention that the unit itself um, is transparent lace. So I actually had to go in with the cream foundation by Ruby Kisses and put some on the actual cap itself. But transparent lace is quite thin. It's just that it's it's pretty light. So you do need to tone it down to your client's skin color so that it, it better matches and melts in. Oh my gosh, I hope I'm making sense. These voice notes are, are kicking my ass right now. So anyhow, um, when you are cutting off the lace, make sure you are cutting in a jagged motion. This prevents the actual lace from looking too wiggy because if you cut straight for some reason it leaves the cast and you can see exactly where it was cut and you'll be able to see the lace nothing you could do can, can actually melt it down to make it look like make it look like it's actually coming from your scalp it's just just don't cut that way cut in a jagged motion um, i use scissors but i find it that if you're new at this maybe use a razor a razor it will already cut jaggedly um, with, a, with a pair of scissors, you kind of have to do the motion with your hand because scissors are made to cut straight. Um, so yeah, just you got to have to shake your hand, gyrate your hand a little bit to get that, um, that jagged uh, look on your lace. So yeah, so I'm going in with the glue again just to glue down any parts that I find need to be left on the wig. So that's what I'm going on to do right now. Any part that needed to be cut off, I already cut off, so now I'm just gluing down what needs to be glued on on this side. If you are new at like even purchasing wigs or anything like that, or you know, even melting lace, I would suggest that you buy either HD lace, the high definition lace. A lot of vendors say that they sell HD lace, and it's really not, it's just regular brand lace. Um, but or transparent lace so hd or transparent lace i recommend those are the two best laces in my opinion that i've worked with they're the easiest to melt brown lace um sometimes it's just it can be too dark for your your scalp and like brown lace works for my complexion because i am dark skin but like if i use dark brown lace or something on her hair there's no way you can melt that to match her skin so if a client or even you get a your fair like her browner in complexion and you get dark brown lace from your 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 vendor you can't use it because it's gonna look dirty on your forehead but never never uh like never be scared to ask these vendors even on aliexpress wherever you're buying your wig ask them to show you a picture of the wig the lace and everything like that so you can kind of have a, a reference to go by of what kind of lace it is so i'm just cutting off the rest of the lace on this side so I pulled some of the hair down, parted it out, and I'm cutting it off because it's not needed. It's extra. So don't feel like feel free to like, you know, just use a discretion. If you're not sure if it's needed or not, just flap the lace up and you can see if her, any of her hair is out or if the cap is out or anything like that. So, you know, OK, maybe I need to go a little bit lower and glue that down instead of cutting it off. You know what I mean? So you just have to use your better judgment and take your time. I find this method to be the most effective when it comes to melting lace. Cutting the lace off prior to putting the melt band on, I find it to be easier. I think that it's faster as well, and it I think it gives it the ultimate melt in my opinion. You guys have to try it and let me know because at least this way you don't have to go back in and cut off the lace, then apply the melt band again. And all these things it just cuts some stuff but i find it to be the best so keep watching so you can see exactly what i do Just be a 
So what you see me doing now, I'm just using the back of the comb and I'm pushing the lace, just further melting it into her skin, like pushing it down to make sure everything is tacked down. But do you guys see that melt though? <laughs> yes. Like that is literally, without me putting the melt band on, just just by following the steps, literally just pre, um, pre plucking the hairline, pre customizing the hairline and cutting the lace off and gluing everything down before I even put the melt band on. Like, yes, you guys, this is a must try. You guys must try it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if it works for you guys or if you think it's helpful. I would love to know. I want your feedback on that. So let me know, guys. Like, I'm just trying to find the easiest method to teach you guys. And so that's what I'm here for. So I'm just going back in with some of the foundation that I used earlier to match her complexion. And I'm just filling in any knots that are black. Like, any little knots, you can use the foundation and it just covers it right up. Before you put the band on, you want to use the hot comb and pull back any flyaways. You don't want there to be any hairs or messy hairs in between the parting area. It should be a very clean um, area. So you just pull back any hair, any little flyaways, anything else. Clean it up. Clean up the hairline as much as possible before you put the band, melt band on. What you see me using is the back of my tail comb, by the way, guys. I'm just using the back of my tail comb. I think it reaches the little crevices that are not glued down the best. So that's what you see me using, just in case anybody wanted to know. So I'm going in with the Eben um, Melt Spray. This is the black bottle. This is the one I use most often if I don't use my own Le Jacques Luxe Melt um, products because I don't have any more, I've sold out. Yay me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Eben is just as good and this is what I use to just extra secure and melt the lace down further. So I don't use just one band, I use two bands. I feel like this adds added security and melts it down even further into the skin. Um, we're having a good laugh because the band went over her eye. <laughs> it was hilarious. So I had to fix it. I can be so clumsy sometimes, oh my gosh. So in any case, yeah, so I used two bands to help melt down to the skin. And now I'm going to secure the back of the wig by sewing it down. So how I do that is I just basically lift up um, the wig in the middle somewhere nearer to the bottom and then between the tracks where there's a space i'll sew that onto her braids i'll show you guys exactly what i mean in just a second right now i'm just parting out the front because i like to with with the middle part bust down like i like when there's that t in the middle like the middle part and then the back has its own parting um to cover the back tracks and it has to be very neat and straight <clears throat> at the back edit it as it is in the middle Right now I'm using some hair serum just to go through the hair with before I start any sort of straightening or anything like that. It just gives it a little sheen and it it's like it acts as a heat protectant to protect the hair so it doesn't like frizz or incur any heat damage.
So after about mm, 15 minutes, I took the band off. And do you guys see that melt though? Let me bring you closer. Do you see that melt? <laughs> like it, it looks like it's coming from her scalp. Let's be real. Like it, it really does. And so it's really, I just feel like this method is just so much easier, so much more just easier it's it's such a better guidelines you could see exactly where you need to glue down where you don't need to glue down things like that but in case i am just gonna strain this hair um i didn't do a good job at like capturing it's so long this wig was 28 inches it was so hard i would have to pull it back so far and i'm just like i was behind i had another client after so i i'm trying to get like just showing you guys it's just basically straightening you know like you take the flat iron you use your comb and you straighten the wig i'm gonna show you guys you guys will have an idea <clears throat> of what it looks like sorry something like my throat is just very crunchy today i don't know what it is but in any case yeah so you guys just have an idea i'm just i take the wax at the top i use the wax stick on every part just on the top so it keeps it just flattens it down so i use the wax stick and then I go in with my hot comb, flatten that down, and then I take my flat iron and then I straighten it with the comb and the flat iron. So you'll see me doing that right now. The flat iron I'm using is called the Conair Pro Titanium Flat Iron. Like it's black and the inside has like a colorful kind of like chrome finish. It works really well. Um, I'm actually probably going to purchase another one in case this one dies because I've had it for a few years now. But it's one of my favorite flat irons um, as well as the Babyless Pro Nano. Those are my top two flat irons. The key to a really good press out is literally taking your time using a comb. It's like mandate. You have to use a comb. 
you have to use a comb you will get the best results trust me use a comb while you flat iron it's gonna be your best friend and for the top to be really flat you want to make sure that um you got to make sure that you use your wax stick on every section then use your hot comb to flatten the top out then go in with your flat iron and straighten it it's a lengthy process but you'll get the best results you don't want to bring the wax stick down too far you kind of just put it by the roots and maybe an inch because you if you bring it down too far it it'll just get the hair very heavy and clunky and it won't be as you know it will it'll just be too heavy and like full of product and you don't want that especially when it's straight it's just doesn't look that it doesn't look good <laughs> so now i'm just parting out um actually fixing the parting for the baby hair she wants them to be fairly full so i would want to make sure there's not there's enough hair out not too much not too little to give her that full effect um the way i used to cut i usually cut my baby hairs i actually cut them in a diagonal so above the parts by her eyebrow i cut shorter and then the parts near her to the end of her eye i cut longer so like a swoop kind of concept to lay my baby hairs i use a very small pencil like flat iron and i curl the hairs going up or down doesn't matter and then i use eco styling olive oil gel to hold it at the top and then i use a non-alcoholic mousse i use my own mousse it's called style on them by Lazar lux melt and it holds it basically it has no alcohol in it and it if because if you use glue with i mean sorry if you use mousse with alcohol in it the lace will lift the lace will a thousand percent lift on you and you're going to have a hot mess especially if you do it on yourself it's going to be harder to fix because you can't really see that well and it, it just it's a hot mess so you don't want to do that so a few non-alcoholic um mousses that i've worked with before i created my own is um iso plus lotto body nairobi to name a few and so those are also alcohol free mousses but you got to make sure the mousse is alcohol free and so my battery died actually before i could show you guys that how i pulled the baby hairs in but i did list the products that i did use to do the baby hairs and once your baby hairs are um like laid then you're going to use a silk like band and put the client under a dryer or dry it with a blow dryer but you want to leave it to make sure it's fully dry before you remove the band and so that's really important that's what gets your baby hairs to look nice and neat and laid and this is the final look guys i did add some layers and um to the hair if you want to see how i did that please let me know in the comments or any styling videos let me know what you guys want to see for future videos i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel until next time guys bye